The United States is at a crossroads. The difference between these two economic systems is profound. And the Chinese have figured out how to manage it. And I want to close with that, because in a way, it's the most important point. In the United States, most production, factories, offices, and stores, are organized as private capitalist enterprises. An owner, a partnership, a board of directors of a corporation, very small numbers of people, own and operate and preside over and tell everybody what to do, and the army of people who are told what to do are called employees. Private capitalism. China had as one model a very different arrangement. Still employers in small number and employees in large number, yes, but it was called the Soviet Union. And it made the state the small number of people at the top and the rest of us employees. The government became the owner-operator. The government officials were the partners. Government officials were the board of directors not private. So you have a state system in Russia and a private system. They both used the employer-employee model, but one was private, one was state. China looked at these two and said, very interestingly, even though they were helped to win their civil war in 1949 by the Soviet Union, not the United States, they made the decision already back then, although it was much debated, and then it grew much more later. They made the decision, which is now China, not to go to either extreme, not an economy overwhelmingly private and not an economy overwhelmingly state. The trick, they thought, would be to have the two private next to state, maybe 50-50, 60-40, but not either or, and that they would coordinate, get from the private what it's good at, get from the state what it's good at, make sure the two are coordinated so that you get the best because you've put the state or the private in charge of what each is best at. This was the plan. This is what they've been doing, and they have been spectacularly successful. The coordinator, the Chinese Communist Party. That's right, and they are full of problems and difficulties that we can talk about. But when it comes to emerging out of poverty, they did it when it comes to being no longer the poor, miserable country of a hundred years of humiliation, they achieved that. When it comes to raising the standard of living of the mass of their people, they stunningly achieved that. And when it means coming to challenge the superpower of the world, the United States, they've done that now too. This is not an empire that's going away or going away quietly, or going to be fading out of our story. They have done what I began with. Marx asked and said, no system, capitalism, the employer-employee way of arranging production. No system ever disappears, Marx told us, until it has explored all the ways of surviving. We explored private capitalism. And it did some amazing things, the rise of the American empire. We've explored state capitalism, state employer-employee. That was the Soviet Union, the fastest growing economy in the 20th century. Whatever else you think about the Soviet Union, they were Europe's backward, unimportant backwater in 1917, and they were the dominant economic superpower in 1975. That's an amazing story when you remember that they fought World War I, they had a civil war, and they fought again World War II, and both world wars were fought on Russian territory as much or more than anywhere else. 
remarkable what they achieved. But they also had big problems they didn't solve. And so the Chinese watching, like they're watching Ukraine, learning the lessons as they are with Ukraine, decided we're going to mix these two. We're not going to do the U.S. and we're not going to do the Soviet Union. We're going to mix them two together with a powerful communist party on top to make sure that we can get rid of the negatives each of them brings and build on the positives each of them offers. And they've proved their, their case. They grow faster. And I want to remind you that the majority of defenses of capitalism in the past always were. Capitalism does divide people. It does make rich and poor. But the best solution, grow the economic pie. That way, those with big pieces will get an even bigger one because the pie is bigger. And the ones with little pieces, they'll see it grow. And they'll be so happy that they get a larger piece, they won't be upset that the rich are also getting richer. That interesting approach the Chinese have used way better. They've grown their economy with their mixed system way better way faster. They have a much bigger pie, and they're doling it around, keeping their working classes happy, developing their technology to beat the United States, etc., etc., etc. Marx's point again, though, and I want to leave you with this and not shirk facing it. Am I saying that therefore the Chinese are not socialists? Nobody has a patent on the word socialist. The Chinese call their system socialism. Socialism with Chinese characteristics. What they mean is a system of private enterprises and state enterprises with a dominating control of a communist party. That's their system. Each working place, factory, office, farm, store, has its employers at the top, private or state, and its employees doing what they are told. Nowhere is there a major economic sector in which the workers democratically own and run their own enterprises. That, Marx said, is where the system will go after capitalism. That's the issue for the next system. We're not at that point yet. What we are at is the fading of the either-or dichotomies between private and state capitalism that were the 20th century U.S. versus USSR story. Those have been superseded by the combination run by the party that is the Chinese resolution of the thesis of private capitalism, the antithesis of state capitalism, and the synthesis that the Chinese have now shown us is the ticket to being the next and probably the last empire that capitalism will have been able to produce. Two lessons to draw. Number one, Socialists who think that they can go beyond capitalism should understand that that means taking what's valuable from private capitalism, taking what's valuable from state capitalism, and now taking it what's valuable from the mix, but taking it to a new place, to a place where democracy builds from the bottom, from the organization of the economy to guarantee that it becomes the norm in society as a whole. No one has done that before. And that can solve problems that are problems for private capitalism, problems for state capitalism, and problems for the Chinese hybrid. 